Good evening. Tonight we're joined by Dale Kazmarek. And of course, Mark's here. How you Maybe. doing, Dale? I might be. I'm doing good. Doing good. I've been up since two o'clock this morning and had to drive down to Chicago and go downtown to the university, make three stops there, and then come back up and make another couple of two stops on my way out. So I'm kind of tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to Chicago tomorrow. Good for you. Huh? So good for you. Enjoy that traffic down there. Well, we're not going to be in Chicago. You're still going to have traffic. There's a peanut butter gallery again. I told. I thought she was supposed to go crack peanuts in the gallery. No. Nope. I don't know what she's doing. Anyway. Yeah, I think I had to do something uh, near Chicago, just near Chicago. wasn't even in downtown Chicago, and I ran into a really bad traffic going past Midway Airport, which is still considered yep. Chicago, but it's on the <clears throat> outskirts of Chicago. Yep, that's Highway 50. That's Cicero Avenue, Highway 51. No, that's Highway 50, isn't it? 50, yeah. Yeah, Cicero Avenue. Yep, yep, yeah, that's that, that's crazy, and and I, I have a I have a nickname for Chicago. I call it Chicago. Sorry, but it's true. It's because you don't like driving shit down there. Because the traffic is shit down there. <laughs> well, I used to say that, that that Chicago actually comes from smelly onion. Did you know well, that? Well, I'm going down there. American word. Actually, I'm going to the same place you're supposed to be at tomorrow, Dale. Yeah. The what is that? The Chicago Paracon? Yeah, Chicago Paranormal Convention. Yeah, it's going to be out there in uh, countryside. Uh, countryside. You know, from uh, around uh, 12 p.m. till 7 p.m. It's going to be about 80 vendors. Uh, it's going to be uh, several speakers. Allison Jorlene is going to be talking. Uh, Gary, Gary uh, Isley the second or third. He's going to be talking about the Ghost of the Black Hawk Wars, which we actually had a chance to investigate several years ago with him and Dan Norville. We got some amazing evidence out there. And um, there's supposed to be uh, somebody else talking about uh, some um, uh, grass man or um, something oh, like that. I'm sorry. Uh, Something. Like I remember that. I can't think what that was now. Yeah, I think there's like four speakers, uh, four or five speakers, and I mean you can't beat the price. It's only a dollar admission for the whole day. Um, I don't know how he makes any money, but I yeah yeah you know, I know how. Well, he he you know, probably. Um, charges the vendors for their tables and the, and the readers for their tables. Uh, and that's how he makes the money. Because uh, I did that the same thing when I was at the Midwest uh, Spirit Fest. We'll be talking about Goatman, Flesher Folklore. Right. There you go. Nathan Couch. I'm going to hope to sit in on some of those uh, speakers uh, when I get a chance. <laughs> and then Barnaby Jones is going to be speaking there tomorrow, too. Okay. Yeah. Bob Anderson. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be a nice event. Uh, it's a uh, it's, it's a pretty su good sized venue. It's uh, actually part of the uh, Teamsters Local 150 building. It's a big black building. It's, it's, it's not it's not it's very easy not to miss. And uh, I'm going to get there probably around 10 o'clock to set up. Um, they're going to open the doors around noon, and. Uh, and they're going to have uh, all these people. And in the last couple of times they had this event, they had a lot of people. Um, they used to have the events in a smaller, like, little uh, restaurant on um, Archer Avenue near 63rd Street. And, um, I mean, that was that was crowded. I mean, they had a lot of people in there uh, going through, you know, getting readings, uh, uh, just, you know, uh, just going to the different tables and vendors and, and uh, other investigators and um, 
I like to do it just to make a lot of connections and talk to people as well. So I'll be passing out a lot of my business cards when I'm there. And um, that's how I made some contacts for people that have wanted to uh, show up at the Midwest Spirit Fest that I did uh, uh, last year. I don't know if I'm going to have one this year. It doesn't look like I'm going to have one this year for some reason. Um, uh, you know, the, without going into too much detail, I just didn't, uh, uh, you know, we didn't, uh, uh, we, haven't, we haven't contacted one another yet to set this thing up. And basically it's, uh, it's already June. It's getting late. If you're going to do it in October, you know, I would have liked to get this thing set up and started, you know, put the uh, stuff on Eventbrite as early as maybe March. So yeah. people could, uh, you know, really get, uh, you know, we can get a lot of people, get vendors, get psychics, and get this all set up. And it's a lot of work to set something like that up. I mean, I've done several of these now. I, I you know, participated in what was then called the Ghost Trackers Exposition starting like in the late 70s through the early 1980s. And that was, even that was a lot of work. Um, so, I mean, you know, just attracting people, um, you know, to, to talk and to be there is one thing, but then trying to get the public involved is another thing. So, I mean, you, uh, you know, if you got a lot of followers on, you know, Facebook or Instagram or, or TikTok or whatever, I mean, you can get that, you can get the word out pretty easily. Uh, it's still a matter of, you know, people, I mean, considering it's only a dollar to get in, I mean, you're just going to get a lot of well, people. Yeah. In there and they, uh, I think it was that way last year as well, because I went last year. Yeah. Because yeah, when I showed up last year, the, the guy that runs it, Jack or whatever his name is, yeah, Jack came up, he came up to me and he's like, well, if I would have known you would have been down here, I would have asked you to be a speaker. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, I've been I, seriously. I've been trying to, you know, to uh, uh, give a talk there for several years now, and uh, um, I guess he just has a lot of other commitments that he's promised people, you know, from even from years ago that uh, to to there. He's a very nice guy and everything. I've met him several times. Uh, uh, we we col uh, co collaborated a bit with. Um, the uh, Midwest Spirit Fest last year because he had a lot of contacts. He had a lot of people. He had a lot of psychics and readers and vendors that wanted to come in. So it, it really helped uh, bring in, you know, some some revenue for that. And um, I was hoping to do that again this year. But, you know, I mean, the way I look at it, it is a hell of a lot of work. Yeah. And, um, you know, not that I'm getting any younger or older, which I'm getting older, obviously, but I'm not getting younger. But I mean, uh, it's it's just it's just a lot of work to get everything set up. And sometimes when you do this, you know, you get people that, um, you know, uh, hey Ron, how you doing? Ron's one of my members uh, from Crystal Lake. Um, yeah, you, sometimes you'll get people that are that will cancel. I know uh, the I think it was the first year. Um, you know, I had like ten speakers, and I think uh, two or three of them canceled. Um, so. I had to step in and do two talks uh, to kind of make up for those, uh, uh, you know, those those hours that we had something there. Um, and the other the other one, we just kind of did a panel discussion, you know, for the other hour towards the end, and everybody seemed to like that as well. <clears throat> Getting everybody up there so you could just ask questions about you know anybody or anything that was up there. So um, we were going to do that again this year. And just make an make an hour just for a panel discussion. We've had all the speakers there, um, and let them just you know, have the you know the the audience just uh, you know pummel them with questions. You know, people the audience like to do that kind of stuff. You know, sometimes you know you, when when somebody's doing a presentation, and they get done with their presentation, they'll say, "Do I have any questions?" And it's like everybody kind of crawls in their shell they're kind of shy to put their hand up but uh, if you get a panel discussion going and you get a couple of people ask the question and before you know it you got you know five or ten yeah. people with their hands up trying to ask questions yeah i've seen those at at, at the milwaukee Paracon. they they did the uh t uh when t was running it that that he's had a couple of those panel like discussions and they went over really well oh yeah does he still run the Milwaukee Paracon? No. no. Okay. It's run by uh, Mike Huberty now. 
Oh, okay. I know Mike. Yeah. I've never actually met him, but I know, I know him. Yeah. Mike, Mike is, uh, he just posted something about that too. I saw it. He builds a lot of paranormal equipment. If I'm if I'm thinking about the same Mike Huberty, no, mm, no. He, he has got a band named we Sunspot. Have, we are not going to have the peanut gallery button in every five minutes. <laughs> he has a band called Sunspot, a local oh, band okay. from okay. Madison, and and uh, there's only three of them, and they play like kind of paranormal music sometimes. And he also <clears throat> has a show called, he has a podcast that he does, um, Something After Dark. I can't remember what it was called, right off the hand. Well, this guy must be thinking it must, must have a real similar, similar name, because I, I've said that before in the past, and I was corrected on that. So, I mean, it must be somebody with um, a very similar name. I, I'd have to give that some thought. But I know there's a guy that, that, that has a similar sounding name or something like that, that, that builds a lot of paranormal equipment, uh, the, you know, EM pumps and all types of uh, uh, detectors and so forth uh, that, that, that he sells it to the, to the public. So, and uh, obviously that's not him. Uh, yeah, it's October 19th this year. Okay. Saturday, October October nineteenth, Milwaukee Paracon, and it's now run by American Ghost Walks, which is yeah. his his thing. Yeah, Mike Huberty's thing. <laughs> and yeah, it seemed, like, it seemed like a lot of the different ghost tours kind of like was were, were absorbed by that American Ghost Walks that was like in this area. I mean, um, uh, several what different tour guides. Had companies that uh, were either bought up or sold to the American Ghost Walks. And I just was, built my soda. I'm sorry. He oh. asked me what I was bitching about, and I said I just built my soda. Well, Mike's sister will be there in Chicago too tomorrow. She's okay. one of the, she's the one speaker, Allison Jorlin. Yeah, that's Mike's sister. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Yep. I've met her a few times. Yeah, I've met her. Um, we, we run into each other a lot during Paracons and so forth. I've actually uh, met uh, Larry uh, a couple of times. Like I said, we he took us to um, uh, a few places associated with the Black Hawk Wars. Uh, there's a bridge overlooking a, a battle that took place. And you know how I hate bridges, so I wasn't too you know keen being on that bridge. Uh, but then there's also the um, uh, Battlefield Park. I think it's, I think it's some, called something like that. And they had uh, you know a little skirmish that took place there that, that there were 12 militia people that were actually killed. Uh, and they got their markers right there. So we were doing a, uh, a Phasma Box session there. And uh, we, we kind of asked the question that all of a sudden uh, this this voice came through and said, 12 remains and i go whoa whoa did you hear that 12 remains like 12 bodies and he goes i, I kind of make a i kind of made him a believer of the uh, the phasma box after he heard that and a few other things and then we went to a couple cemeteries uh later that evening um um uh, not too far from kirkland and uh, we didn't have permission to go in the cemetery, but there, there was no fence. So there's a sidewalk that runs all the way around the cemetery. So you can be on the sidewalk and be investigating without you know, trespassing. And we actually had several cop cars go past and uh, they just drove past and they just kept on going. And um, I wanted to go back again this year when my friend came in from um, England because uh, uh, Dan Norville, who, uh, works with, who used to work with Larry, I, I, Dan Norville, basically, if you know Dan Norville, you know he basically kind of retired from the paranormal. He wasn't doing any more. Uh, but before before that happened, he had said, well, we now have permission to go in those cemeteries after hours. And I go, whoa, that's cool. So I was hoping to do that this year. 
And unfortunately, um, you know, when I asked them about them, you know, maybe you and Larry can uh, uh, take us around there and show us some spots and go into those cemeteries. And he says, well, you know, I, th I thought he would make an exception for me. Uh, he, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. It was me coughing. Uh, I, th I thought he would make an exception for me, but then he said, well, you know, you know, I, I'm reti in re uh, I have retired from the paranormal. Uh, reach out to Larry. <laughs> and it was funny when I reached out to before I, you know, I, 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 I emailed them both. And, you know, Larry had said, well, reach out to Dan. And Dan said, reach out to Larry. And, and you know, so um, I, I did both, and eventually uh, Larry got back to me and said that uh, um, he wasn't going to be able to uh, to make any of those dates in, in August at all. So um, we just kind of scrapped that idea of going out there. I, I don't have permission to go out there. I mean, I could go up the, out there and stand on the sidewalk again, you know, but uh, I really <laughs> wanted to go into the cemetery itself. And, and, it, and it is kind of a far trek for me uh from where i'm at on the southwest side of the city in oak lawn so it's that's it's, it's a bit of a drive it's not too terribly bad but uh um if i would have had somebody there to kind of guide us around and let us you know you know be with us when we go into those places we would have went for sure so um um but we're still planning a, a heck of a lot of stuff for this year when my friend comes in he's coming in uh on uh August the 6th and he's going back on the 27th so he's going to be here for three weeks and uh, we're going a number of places including he wants to go to Gettysburg really bad so we're going to Gettysburg for four days and um, uh, oh, it sounds like that trip's going to be packed though three weeks uh, well stop investigations <laughs> yeah I mean um, I when I when I kind of you know kind of tossed it up in the air and said, well, who'd be willing to go to Gettysburg? And I had a few people from my group. Uh, there's a few people from another group called Ghost Head Soup that normally, you know, kind of tag along because they've uh, been there almost every over, almost every year with me. And like I said, I can go back to Gettysburg every year and I, I, I'll still find new places I've never been to. I mean, oh. it's just that big of a location. And uh, so I've been there about, you know, at least eight times, maybe nine times. And it uh, seems like I can always find interesting locations to, uh, uh, to investigate or to show, you know, and uh, I just love showing the place. It, it, it's just you know, an amazing place. I got a question for you, Dale. Yeah. When you go to those, those places like Gettysburg and those places, do you actually fly out there or do you drive? Oh, we drive. We drive, yeah. Uh, for me, it's, about a, it's roughly about a 10-hour, 11-hour drive from – my house uh, in Oak Lawn to go out to Gettysburg. So, I mean, we're going to leave uh, super, super early in the morning, probably, you know, six o'clock or something. Uh, we'll get there probably around seven o'clock their time because we lose an hour going over to the East Coast. And um, uh, we still have a chance to do something that day. We're checking our hotel real quick. So um, there are a couple of places I could show real quickly around the town of Gettysburg. And then we were hoping uh, what we were going to probably do the, the parking lot of the Jenny Wade house. And the Jenny Wade was the only civilian killed in Gettysburg during the battle. Um, they have a parking lot for that and, and the, the old orphanage across the street, which we actually did a, a couple of years ago when we were there. Uh, we were able to spend two hours in the Jenny Wade and two hours in the um, uh, orphanage and had, had a great time. But you could literally park on the parking lot right there and you can take one step and you're on the battlefield. That's how close you are. It's, wow. it's, it's, it's East Cemetery Hill. So you, you don't necessarily have to be right on the battlefield to maybe get some EVPs or, or to get some pictures or video or stuff like that. And um, so we're going to do that again. And uh, yeah, it's perfectly legal. It's a parking lot. It doesn't say any any certain hours you can't be there. It doesn't only say for customers only because, it, again, it, the building's closed at that time. So even if it did say customers only, I mean, the building's closed. I mean, there's, there's no, nobody going right. in or out of there. So, um, yeah, we well, got a number of interesting places that we're going to be doing. And uh, there's a there's two bridges we want to investigate, including one called, uh, well, Sachs Bridge, which is the more famous of the two. And then um, the John Eisenhower Bridge, which they call Suicide Bridge. Um, so we're going to, 
I'm going to try to get permission from the Adams County um, Sheriff's Department to be out there after dark at the um, um, Saks Bridge because um, uh, that's not on the battlefield. It's it's part of Adams County. Uh, they do have a sign saying no nothing after dusk, but if maybe I can convince them that we're all responsible adults and we're out there, you know, uh, you know, we're not going to be, you know, putting graffiti on the bridge or destroying stuff that maybe they'll allow us to come there. And if not, then we'll just have to do something, you know, later in the day, uh, maybe when the when the crowds die down or something, because there's been reports of stuff going on uh, throughout the day and throughout throughout the evening, sounds of footsteps. Uh, sounds of horses and, and wagons, because that was one of the retreats, uh, one of the retreat routes that Lee did on January, uh, July 4th uh, to go back to uh, uh, Virginia. And there have been a lot of strange things that have happened on that bridge. So, yeah, I mean, uh, um, yeah, it's going to be one of the uh, interesting spots, but I mean, we have a ton of interesting locations. Of course, you know, you know, hanging with you guys and when we go up to Wisconsin to, to do that Wisconsin trip and uh, see those locations, including the Beast of Bray Road and other spots, I think, uh, um, you know, Paul will get a kick out of that. We might have a few others that may, may, may be tagging along uh, as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, we have like certain days kind of delegated for certain locations. We got a whole day in Peoria. Uh, that we're going to be out there with Sylvia Schultz, and she's going to show us through the uh, what they call the hilltop, uh, Peoria, which is what remains of the Peoria State Hospital Asylum locations. And uh, we, I think we're going to get access to a couple of buildings that uh, um, pretty pretty much in like Flint, I think, in a couple of couple of buildings. I really wanted to get into Pollock Hospital because that is where the it's, it's, old, it's an old tuberculosis hospital. And that's where a lot of deaths occurred. There's, they actually have a, a section called the men's death ward and the woman's death ward. And people just died like crazy from TB. They used to call it consumption back there, and actually. But uh, uh, unfortunately, it's not owned by the same persons that when we did our investigation. And they just want a ton of money to get in there, unfortunately. And we just don't have that. Uh, we don't have the the, the the amount of personnel that we would need to make it affordable for everybody. So we'll do some other things. There's some cemeteries. There's actually the Peoria, Hosp uh, the Peoria um, um, Library that when they were doing some renovations, they found a, a number of bones underneath the, uh, the foundation. And uh, they... Um, had to do some investigating to figure out what, what, what that was. And obviously, because they disturbed them, you know, there's some reports that people think that parts of the uh, the library are actually haunted. So we actually got up, uh, uh, Sylvie was actually able to arrange uh, one of the uh, librarians to actually take us into the basement and take us into uh, spots that would be very close to where, they, where those bodies were. So uh, we have kind of a, a guide or a part of that day, so that's going to be pretty cool. But um, we're going to a couple of museums in Chicago for each each day, the Museum of Science and Industry and the Field Museum of Natural History. They, they're both very haunted. Um, you know, the ashes of Clarence Darrow were scattered in the, uh, the Jackson Park Lagoon on the, on the south side of the Museum of Science and Industry. And that dates back to the old Columbian Exposition. It's one of the buildings that were built uh, what they call the White City. Um, and um, we uh, we got a few things that we're going to be doing inside there, including there's a 007 exhibit coming to Chicago. And of course, my friend is from London. And of course, 007 is from England. So it's going to be kind of a surprise that we're going to be taking the tour and seeing the uh, uh, some of the artifacts that one of the Aston Martins that was used in the show and so forth. Oh, that'd be cool. And uh, then we're actually going to go into uh, two exhibits that are very haunted, which is a U-505 submarine, which uh, Captain Check actually, you know, committed suicide by shooting himself in the head before they, they before they were able. The U.S. was able to capture that that sub and then bring it back to Chicago. And the coal mine exhibit, uh, which, uh, you know, I used to 
do that when I was a, a youngster for field trips. We went there and it was really kind of cool. But I was told by one of the former tour guides at that time, it was he was he was a he was a tour guide and now he's a former tour guide. But he sent me a really nice long email. And he said, well, did you know that some of the implements that they show in that coal mine exhibit were actually taken out of locations where mine disasters took place. Wow. So I said, wow, that's a trigger object. Right. You know? So I'm sure we're not going to be able to do any investigations, but we'll be able to be where those right next to where those things were. And I'll have my recorder running, you know, and maybe even my my camera, you know, I might be able to sneak sneak in there some sort of like EMF device or something. Um, because they probably won't even know what it is. And just to see what happens, you know, when we do that. So, uh, and then the very next day, we're going to go to the field museum. And the field museum has, of course, the Egyptian room, which is spooky enough. But then there's a little sarcophagus. Uh, it's only about maybe about that big or so. It's not very big. It's maybe all oh, about a foot or a foot and a half, you know, very small. And it's it's um, the person that's mummy is in there is a, is is hara h-a-w-r-a -A, hara and they say that sometimes when they come back the next day that little sarcophagus is laying on the side because it's sitting it's standing upright it's fallen over some people actually said they hear screams coming down from the egyptian room well if you think of it i mean all that stuff that's in those the, the egyptian rooms or the, or the museums around the world you know they were basically they were looted they were looted, you know. They were they were brought out. You know, there was like grave desecration to bring those into museums. So I mean, yeah, I mean, it makes sense that those places would be haunted. And the last thing we're going to see is something that I, I I saw one time only, and it's the the very famous exhibit of the two man eating lions, the Savo lions, um, and they have the actual taxidermy bodies from those two man-eaters. And uh, again, I think that's a trigger object. I mean, even though they're dead, but the skins, the pelts, they're still there. And um, so, and uh, you know, who knows? I mean, I, I, I might run into a couple, you know, maybe people from the museum, maybe, uh, you know, maybe a tour guide or somebody that's just going past and maybe I could just say, it's just kind of ask them like, you know, any strange things ever happen here, you know, especially in the Egyptian room or something. And, you know, they might say something, they might not, you never know. You know, sometimes they're told, you know, kind of hush, hush, don't, don't say anything, don't perpetuate the uh, the legends or the, the, the ghost stories. But some people will just say, well, I really I'll, I'll really tell you this, now. but don't use my name or something like that. So Museum of Science and Industry. Nope. Yeah. Well, I, I, what I did is I got a, a, a one year's, um, uh, what do you call it, um, membership. Uh, to museum, and so my member with my membership, I get uh, uh, two uh, year passes for myself and my wife, and I get one guest pass. I can I'm going to bring a guest, so I can you know I can you know bring people in there um, for free, and then you go straight to the head of the line. You don't have to wait in the line. You you just go through, and you you got it on your phone, or you got it printed out, and they beep you right through. Um, with the with the field museum, I'm going on a Wednesday, and Wednesday is free day, so it doesn't cost you to get into the museum at all, um, as long as you're an Illinois resident, unfortunately. Uh, but Paul, being that he's from the UK, I had to pay thirty dollars to get him in. So it's like us getting in both for fifteen dollars a piece. It's not bad at all. Yeah. But yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I'm trying to plan some other things uh, uh, for. Uh, June, July, and of course later in the year, uh, my my people from my group are getting a little antsy because I haven't planned anything yet. And I've been uh, I've been reaching out to several places um, that I, I can't you know, I can't divulge right now because I don't know which way it's going to go yet. Yeah. But there there is a theater in Chicago that we uh, I think we're going to be able to get into. I mean, I had my research assistant. Um, Mike Rosario, uh, contact them. Um, and they had a very nice dialogue over the phone. 
They're going to have another uh, further dialogue uh, this Monday, and hopefully that will uh, be the, the key to get us in there. Um, they're right in the process of doing a major renovation, and sometimes when you do renovations to locations, it stirs up the ghost. Yeah, it can upset the spirits. Yeah. Some of, them, some of the seats date back to 1982, and they're going to take all those old seats out and put new seats in and do some other renovations. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it would be interesting. Uh, and, and the gentleman, he's actually uh, a, gen a general manager, was uh, very excited to, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm very interested, blah, blah, blah. And let me just bring it up to my boss. And then, you know, and, and then, he, came, then he got back to Mikey and he said, well, let's talk more on Monday. And uh, so uh, I think we're going to be able to do that. I was just contacted, uh, well, actually last year, by a park district, uh, which uh, I've been able, I've been trying to get in there to do some uh, investigating on the park district property after dark, and also into the field house, which is uh, the field house, and also a maintenance building uh, where they have some unusual things going on. And the, the gentleman. I called him a couple of days ago. He wasn't around. I left a voicemail and he got back to me yesterday. And we had a very nice conversation and, and we're going to we're going to be able to do that. We're, again, that's cool. something that we are going to be able to do. We're going to be the first investigators ever to investigate that site, uh, which is always kind of nice. And um, then he also said, well, I mean, later on, as they get close to October, uh, I guess, you know, prior to that, obviously, but he, he says he wants to uh, have me do a, a, a ghost tour, a bus tour for the park district, uh, which would mean that they would be selling tickets um, in their um, in, in their like their fall catalog for people to uh, uh, to buy tickets. And, um, um, you know, I, obviously I get paid for that. So that's kind of cool. And uh, obviously one of the stops we would be doing would be that that park district. And um, so I, I, you know, once I get more information on that, I'll begin to, to plan the itinerary, and um, uh, that'll be neat. Uh, I, I've done stuff for that for the library uh, in, that, in that town. I'm I'm kind of being a little cryptid right now because I want to make sure that I don't I don't spoil anything until um, until I get everything set in stone. But uh, um, I've done stuff for that local library uh, in that town as well. Uh, I've done presentations there, so this will be. Uh, my and I actually did a Civil War roundtable uh, for that for that um, park district as well, uh, which again I'm in the Civil War, and I actually did a talk on uh, Ghosts of the Civil War, which was uh, which was pretty. You know, everybody really enjoyed that, um, and uh, now now I'll be doing a a, a a a bus tour for that park district as well. And maybe it might be a you know a regular thing. So. It goes over really well. I mean, uh, um, you know, people, they might, you know, add more buses or they might have more than one bus. You know, they might have like one day and they might have another few days down the line or next week they might have another tour. I, I remember when I did it for um, the Tinley Park Park District, I mean, they turned, I mean, we had a 55 passenger bus and they ended up turning away 30 people on top of the 50, 55 that they booked which they could have done a smaller bus and have more people. So uh, I think, uh, uh, and I'll, I'll mention that because a lot of times when you put that, that word ghosts on a, uh, uh, on a fall uh, event thing for the, for the park district, it, be, it entices people to, you know, to, to go on something like that, you know? So uh, hopefully uh, it'll be something we can do, you know, at least every year or every other year. Yeah, yeah, they they do that. It sure does help with the tourist attractions when they they label things like that. Because we did something they called it. Well, it was a haunted boat tours, and we were just going up there because my wife had never been on the boat tours, and we we're just going to go take the boat tour. Well, we end up getting there late, so they were doing the night ones and. There was a haunted one at night, and we took it. Yeah. Well, Richard Crow. Oh, I don't know if you ever ever that rings a bell, but basically he was the, um, I guess you'd call him the original ghost hunter in Chicago because he's been doing it long. He was doing it longer than me. He died in 2012, 
Uh, it's 12 years ago. It's really hard to believe it's been gone that long. But he's also buried in Resurrection Cemetery, which is haunted by the Resurrection Mary. But uh, he was the he was the original uh, uh, the originator, I guess you'd call it, of the Chicago Ghost Tours um, when he was uh, taking his um, uh, his ma uh, finalizing his masters at DePaul University, and um, so same thing happened when they started that ghost tour. Um, they turned away more than fifty people. Uh, they just couldn't, and it, it, it just expanded like crazy from that point forward. And he actually made a living doing that, the ghost tours and the and the presentations and lectures and speaking engagements at uh, getting nice, little, sizable honorariums at, from colleges and so forth. And um, you know, I started my tours in 1982, and um, they've been going, you know, for you know 40 years. Um, and um, unfortunately, they've been kind of going downhill. In recent years, but uh, you know, occasionally you know, you know, I'll get a you know several big buses that I'll do for park districts, libraries, senior clubs, uh, retirement centers. I mean, they like to go out, especially elderly people that, that are kind of like uh, basically you know you know uh, in a location where um, it's, it's sort of like uh, they, they, they help take care of the seniors out there. I'm not sure what you would actually call that. Uh, assisted living or something, I guess you'd call it. Uh, and they love to get out and, and get on a bus and just get out of that building and uh, maybe go out and have a lunch. So I've, I've done stuff in the past where I, I've set, set up, you know, nice buffets for them uh, at, at locations or sometimes family style where they bring them right to the table. They don't even have to get up. And then, of course, they do a nice uh, presentation in the, in the bus tour. But, you know, because they're seniors, it's always usually a daytime tour. Uh, even though sometimes night times are spookier, uh, but uh, you know, you know, they have always wanted a, a daytime presentation. So, uh, um, yeah, so that's kind of the things that I'm doing in uh, right now, and kind of like uh, getting really busy, you know, for uh, later on this year for sure, because um, my friend's going to be in for three weeks, and I got to plan something every single day. Uh, so that's going to be a lot, and I. I got a lot of it planned in a few more days I can plug in pretty pretty easily. And then uh, after that, I just have to, uh, um, I, cause you know, the Democrat, Democratic National Convention is coming to Chicago. Uh, so those four days, I'm not gonna be anywhere in Chicago. <laughs> so we're gonna do something elsewhere. Uh, we're gonna do something um, um, in far away locations from the city of Chicago. Uh, for those uh, four days, which I believe start on the uh, the 19th of August and run through, I believe, the, the 22nd for those four days. So we got things. things we won't be near Chicago either then. No. Nope. Yeah. yeah you you want to probably stay away from the. No, I mean, it's just going to be a lot of people. There's probably going to be protests <laughs> over there and so forth. And. Um, uh, hopefully there won't be any violence like there was in '68 uh, when you know during the Vietnam War. Uh, that was just really kind of uncalled for. Um, but uh, so we're we're planning you know these trips around that. So um, when we have to do anything in Chicago, we're going to do it before or after that uh, four days, and then during those four days we'll just do some other things. So like one of the days we're going to go way out to Rockford which is far enough away from Chicago, we don't have to worry about it. And some of the others are gonna be on the far south side here, um, you know, far away from the city, like you know, 25 miles or more. So um, we don't have to deal with, uh, not only, you know, possible, uh, you know, possible violence or protesters, but you know, just, just trying to find a place to park, you know, uh, it's gonna be really terrible for those four days uh, in Chicago and, uh, um, but yeah, we, we got a lot of interesting stuff planned that we're hoping to be doing. And um, um, as I as I um, uh, try to you know kind of reach off to some other places that we've never been to before, you know, like that movie theater, um, we we had reached out. Uh, you probably were aware that uh, um, a couple of weeks ago I did a pre I did a presentation at the Peabody Mansion. Um, which was part of the uh, WTTW fundraising event uh, 
uh, for the show that I was on Chicago Mysteries. So they had uh, sold tickets. I think they were forty-five dollars a piece, and they were like a donation to the to WTTW. So you got in there and you got to see uh, every uh, the four panelists. It was myself, Adam Seltzer, and these two very nice ladies from the Chicago Tribune um, were there along with Jeffrey Bear. And they started off with the history of the place they were at. They also uh, had the um, a PowerPoint presentation for everybody, and they had put, uh, they had put the the actual portions of the Chicago mysteries in the PowerPoint that was related to that particular person, like myself or Adam or somebody else. So they got to see you know part of what we did. And then Jeffrey asked some questions and then, you know, the audience would ask questions and then he got a chance to walk around and it was, it was really nice. They fed us real nice. They gave us uh, snacks. They had a really nice lunch uh, prepared for us. Um, and uh, so when I was there, I had reached out. Well, actually one of, one of the, uh, one of the ladies, very nice lady named Sherry uh, came to reach out and um you know, she just wanted to know what what I, what I was going to say about the Peabody Mansion, because I know some places they don't want to be known as the ghost mansion anymore. So uh, um, I said, well, I mean, I probably won't say anything unless Jeffrey asks me questions specifically on that. And he never really asked me any questions about that yet. We, I had picked out a couple of places in DuPage County to talk about, which is where Peabody is. And, um, you know, several places that we had talked about, um, uh, it wasn't actually in the show, but you know, the footage that was shot could be used for a later presentation for WTTW. And um, so then we got talking for a little while. And then um, I, I know for a fact this place was never has had a, 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 a thorough investigation by any paranormal team in the past. So I wanted to be the first. And I kind of, uh, we just kind of talked back and forth and that, that, that came up. And so I said, well, I mean, uh, again, if we do this um, uh, investigation, not saying that you need an investigation, there's not that there's something crazy going on and you want you know, to be removed, which I don't do anyway. But um, I said, we just like to investigate places that, that are mysterious. There's, uh, I mean, there's secret passageways, there's secret tunnels, there's secret rooms, there's all kind of stuff in there. Um, and there is there are some ghost stories associated with it. Uh, and there's also some local legends. And uh, she eventually said, well, I mean, um, you know, I mean, I told her, I said, well, first of all, I mean, if you don't want us to say anything about, uh, you know, our investigation, we can keep it completely confidential. And so she's like, let me get back to you when I talk to my boss, uh, Steve. And she got back to me a few days ago and she says, well, um, we're going to pass on the investigation as of right now, which I, which I was kind of, uh, <clears throat> kind of like down in the mouth about a, a bit on that. But she, she offered us the possibility of going in there on a, um, a, a two hour a photography tour uh, that we could go in there with uh, up to 25 people uh, for $150. That's the total amount. That's not $150 per person. And I said, well, I mean, it's not exactly what I wanted. I wanted to go in there and do an investigation. I said, well, I'll, I'll let you know if we decide you know, to do something like that. Because uh, um, we had really wanted to do an investigation and not just, I mean, I did enough photographs when I was there. And if people can go in there and take a tour and do photographs. And you don't have to pay a, you know, that sizable fund, uh, amount of money. Uh, which I know goes towards the restoration of the building and so forth, which I'm, I'm totally for, you know, restoration. Right. But um, so, I mean, we had a, we had that one kind of fall through, but we we're, we're working on uh, two very good ones, you know, the park district and the, the, the theater, which I think we're going to be able to get into, which are, which would be brand new investigations that nobody has done before. And um, uh, we're hoping to maybe do something if we can get enough people at Ashmore Estates um, or possibly even, um, um, well, there was a few other places that we were looking into, the, the Geyer Opera House uh, in Indiana and, um, um, oh, I can't think of all the places, but there were several places that we were looking into 
uh, to, um, oh, one was called uh, the 1861 uh, uh, Masonic Lodge or Masonic Inn, which is in Keatsburg, Illinois, which is all the way on the Missouri border. It's a, it's a good long four and a half hour trip just to get out there. And wow. um, uh, I had contacted them recently about, you know, the, uh, uh, the cost and everything. And so um, we're, we're going to see, first of all, if we can gather a sufficient amount of people for a particular time that we can do that, you know, prior to Paul coming in August, this would be like one of our June, July trips or something and, uh, and see what it would cost for uh, you know, people to get in there. Um, again, it's, it's, I think it, it would work out to, I think right around 30 or 35 hours a person, which is really not that bad. But again, I think they usually want a, a minimum amount of people, you know, to make it worth their while for any type of investigation. And they're very open to it being, you know, paranormally active at that place. I've never been there. In fact, I never heard about it. Some guy had sent me a, a, a Facebook message on a clear blue sky and said, have you heard about this building? I said, no. So I began checking into the place and it sounds pretty interesting. Unfortunately, there's no running water. There's no heat, there's no electricity, and there's no washrooms. They have pot porta potties out there. Uh, so if it's really hot, it's going to be really hot in that building. Um, so um, uh, we have to kind of, you know, judge that by, you know, the weather and what's left. I know most of the weekends are gone because weekends seem to be the first thing that people book. So it's usually what's left is Fridays and Sundays and then, of course, weekdays. Uh, so... Yeah, I'm uh, working on a lot of stuff. I've been uh, really busy trying to plan that for my group and uh, um, really excited about some of these things that, that we got in the works and things that are already set in stone. Oh, sounds like you've been busy. Yeah, very busy. Just hope Mother Nature cooperates for you. Yeah, yeah. Cooperating for shit lately. Well, I'm hoping it's going to cooperate when we go up to do the Beast of Brave Road and all that stuff. So uh, yeah, that too. Same we here. To... I am so tired of, of having weekends. You know, I have weekends off, and I'm so tired of, of all week long it being nice, and then the weekend comes and it's crap, and we can't go do anything. Yeah. You know, I mean, I like to get down there. I mean, I'd take a weekend off if if it wasn't raining. You know. And go down to to, to Resurrection Cemetery because I wanted to go there last time, but it never happened. Yeah. And and uh, <laughs> you know, every well, time you know, I'm, I'm always here. I'm every time, time, every, so, uh, every um, time we talk about it, oh, we could go take this trip, and next thing you know, we're talking about it early in the week, the wife and I, and next thing you know, rains in the forecast, and it's yeah. like yeah. Sun -up. Well, there, I mean, if you guys decide to come down here, I could show you guys around. I mean, there's a lot of places. Bachelors Grove Cemetery is very haunted. You know, Resurrection, I could show you what's the, the grave of what's, what some people believe might be Resurrection Mary. Um, it um, uh, was in the papers back in um, October of uh, 1983, 50 years after the death of, uh, of the, the girl uh, that they believe to be Resurrection Mary. Um, and there are a lot of other places um, that uh, um, that are very very strange and unusual in Chicago. Um, well, yeah, I, I've got a list. I've got okay. a bucket list just for Chicago. Oh well, yeah. I mean, you know, it's the, come Chicago, down. the greater Chicago area, I should sure. say. Well, if you guys decide uh, to come down, just send me that list, and I can I, I can definitely try to plan like, an itinerary. Like tomorrow, we're gonna. I'm gonna to try to find the 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 car. The Blues Brothers Cop Mobile. Yeah. It's in Joliet, a, Illinois. Yeah. Before on a I, stick. Yeah. So I'm gonna go try to find that just to get a picture before I end up at the conference tomorrow. Is that the Volo Museum you said? No, it's 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 the Blues Brothers car is on a pole in Joliet, Illinois somewhere. Oh, okay. Okay. The car from the blues, the original Blues Brother movie, with a great big uh, megaphone on the roof. It's right. at twenty four hundred one South Chicago Street, Joliet, Illinois. Okay. 
Well, part of part of one of our trips uh, in August is going to be to go up to the Volo Museum uh, because I understand they have the original Bonnie and Clyde car. Oh, that would be cool too. To see those hundreds of bullets that were pumped in by you know Texas Rangers. Uh, and they died. They were riddled with bullets, and they had that Bonnie and Clyde car. And they also said they have the uh, the Black Beauty from the Green Hornet. They have a I don't know if it's the original, but they do have a a Batmobile up there, and other things like that. So I mean, you could spend some yeah. Time well, with it. it depends on what Batmobile you're talking about. I mean, over the generations, that car has changed. Yeah, you know, I mean. My favorite was always the original Adam West, Burt well, Ward one. one. You know. Yeah. And then they got the, supposedly they got the, 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 the Knight Rider, uh, yeah. uh, Corv, uh, what is it? The, uh, uh, uh fire, firebird or is it a. Oh, uh, Kit was like, yeah, like a Pontiac firebird yeah. or Trans Am or something. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Kit, Kit was a. I think he was a firebird. That's, that's a talking yeah. that would talk to the guy. So, it's pretty cool. Funny, firebird. So they're supposed to have a lot of that stuff up there. Okay. I'm going to look it up. No, no, Kit, Kit, was a, I think no. Kit was a Camaro. I think Kit was actually a Camaro. I think it's like 30. And he had a twin, had a twin named Car. We, tried, we actually tried to get him to do an investigation. Okay, because uh, uh, the only team that was ever able to get in there was the Kling Brothers from Ghost Lab. Uh -huh. And uh, they went in there and, uh, of course... Pontiac you know, Trans Am. Okay, there you go. Pontiac, okay, so it was Trans Am. So when they oh, went... Was it an 84 or an 86? Right. 82. 82? Yes. Right at the beginning of that style. Yes. I was just looking it up. I thought it would be more like an 84 or an 86. No, there was a definitely, I knew it was definitely a Pontiac. Right. Because it had that front end. I may not know much about cars, but I knew, I do know that. Well, we tried to contact the museum to get in there. Uh, this was not that long after Ghost Lab was in there. And if you ever watch the you know, Ghost Lab, you know, they provoke the hell out of locations. I mean, they're worse than ghost adventures, and um, it must have left a bad taste in the owner's mouth because uh, he never returned my calls, my emails, or anything, and I sent them numerous times, and um, so I guess they don't want this like hands-off paranormal. So I figured even though it's hands-off paranormal, I mean, geez, I mean, you got things in there, especially at the Bonnie and Clyde car, I mean, that, that, that was an untimely death. I mean, they were just riddled with bullets. And that, which I think was overkill, really, but uh, I guess. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, I, I, I watched a lot, but you, you, during that time, those cops must have been pissed off. I mean, as many times as Bonnie and Clyde, not only did they have the better car. They eluded them? You know, they outran them. So, I mean, I mean, literally, they kind of like taunted them, the cops because yeah. they knew that their car was better and faster yeah so, and, and 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 that that was one thing that made clyde pretty smart he knew which cars to steal yeah you know which ones were going to outrun that the cops yeah they, they had those v8s that were just coming out right and, yeah and 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 the cops were getting frustrated Oh, because they were getting, they were getting, uh, they were, they were literally being made a fool out of, you know, right. um, and, you know, they said, well, I mean, it's just like, you know, the, the adrenaline got all the, or the dander, uh, whatever you want to call it, you know, when they, when they finally cornered them, they just said, they ain't escaping. We're going to get it. We're going to end it right here. And they did. Yeah. Yeah. Now they made sure they weren't going to walk away. I, I've always wanted to see that exact location where that took place in Texas. And I'm hoping maybe when I make a Texas trip one year, because I want to go out there to see the, the, the plane crash of Jim Croce, which is out there in Texas. Uh, maybe I can, if it's not that far, uh, Texas is a big state. 
I wanted to go out and see the uh, to investigate the Marfa lights, the spook lights out in Marfa, and maybe this this location where the Bonnie and Clyde. Uh, uh, ho hopefully, it's marked with some sort of plaque or something, or at least you can find out uh, using uh, uh, Google to find out where it actually was. I think that would be an interesting place to do an EVP session out there where those people were killed, you know. Um, but, uh, I mean, you know, it, it, I don't know if, if everything that was actually in the movie Bonnie and Clyde actually happened because, you know, I mean, you know they had... Uh, you know, they had uh, uh, Faye Dunaway, and then they had um, uh, Gene Hackman was in there, and um, uh, who was Clyde? I'm trying to think of his name. Uh, he was Shirley, Shirley McLean's brother, believe it or not. And um, so they had a lot of interesting people in there, but I wonder if, if some of the, if all that stuff was actually true, like when they, when they kind of cornered that one Texas Ranger and they tied him up and they, they kind of made fun of him and all that. Well, and, so I, mean, I, would, I it actually happened, but you know. I think I think a lot of Hollywood stuff is hyped so that they can get the ratings and the viewerships and stuff like this. Sure. I mean, I watched what I've watched on them was more like the the History Channel documentaries on Bonnie and Clyde, and they yeah. were taking a lot of that from um, um where they capture uh, the one turn whatever the one woman that wasn't bonnie the other one there was another woman in the car with them for a while but they oh took yeah it, they yeah, took it was, a diary uh, or something like that yeah supposedly that was uh clyde's sister a uh, clyde's sister-in-law right because it was married to his brother um and then they had that um that young kid uh, who was uh, kind of hanging around Bonnie and Clyde, and he was the one that actually uh, set set him up, you know, because he, he the, the sheriff promised to would let him off if they could, you know, they could pull this off, and they, they let him off, and uh, um, they were able to ambush him. <coughs> yeah, that kind of stuff has always interests me because um. You know, it's it's just going back to that scenario of untimely death, you know, and you know what happens, you know, to those people that die violently like that to see if they're they're hanging around or if there's some sort of residual, uh, you know, like here in Chicago, the St. Valentine's Day massacre. Day massacre. People, I was just going to say something about that. People so occasionally say they they hear gunshots and machine gun fire, you know, uh, from that area, and they just attribute it to what happened back on. February 29, uh, February 14th, 1929. So, yeah. Well, Dale, it's always been great to have you. We're running out of time. Okay. So, tomorrow, I'm, I'll be down in Chicago. So, we'll be seeing you tomorrow sometime, Dale. Cool, yeah. I'll be there. I got a table set up there somewhere i'm not exactly sure but just within the 80 vendors you'll just have to look for me <laughs> well i'm just going down there to watch some of the people and talk you know and see sure what's yeah so i meet new people yeah meet new people so yeah cool all right we'll see you see you hey, tomorrow guys, little road trip now rain or shine so yeah i i need to get out of the house things inside there so yeah what it's all inside down there, so yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. I mean, they did have, last year, there was a couple of vendors outside in the parking lot. But it wasn't raining. But it wasn't raining. No, I, it's think, it, I think it's actually supposed to be. Well, they do an annual one every year in Fowler in Indiana where they have all the vendors out in the street. They close the, it's a small town, so they close the street in downtown on both ends and they did tap tables That's out there and there's vendors out there with with uh you know umbrellas and tents and so forth and i was there a couple times it was really nice as long as you got nice weather next weekend is 13th right yeah no the no 13th, it's thursday. The 15th and the 16th. never mind it's thursday anyway all right so stay safe, everybody. Have a nice weekend. And remember, anything's possible. We'll be back next week.